Who are you calling bums, pal? You. Randy. Listen, we got we got two more of us in the back seat. Pity the back seat. If you're Stop looking it. for a fight, I am looking for a fight. Come on, put let's go. Down. Come on, right now. Come right on. Now. Round two. Round two. Round two. But this time, it's episode. I'm not even sure what episode the first one was, but uh, this is episode 18 of Mission Statements, a Delta Bravo Urban Exploration Team podcast with my friend over here, Darren Dalton. Now, like right, right before I press record, you know, it was there's a couple of months ago, no? It was there. Was was, I guess yeah. so. I mean, it's just all, it's, it's a blur, man. It it's is. It, it absolutely is. Um, yeah, it was a couple of months ago, close to probably about three months, I think. But listen, life and time happens and, and you know, shit happens sometimes. We yep. had a technical difficulty and there was no way I would able to be, I mean, I could have put it out, but it was literally not because of our conversation, because that was great. It was an echo Oof. that was unlistenable like it would it would drive you crazy if you listened to right. it right so not good not no, good no no not good can't, we can't we can't do that no, so no. i was like you know what i was aggravated i'm like you know what it's nobody's fault it was an oversight and here we are after <laughs> you know the holidays and this and that and but here we are and i appreciate <laughs> once again for the duo for my man how you been oh, i'm good man I, i've been working like crazy and that's i'm not complaining whatsoever um like at all things are awesome dude um good 18 episodes that's i mean that's your you're trucking well yeah i mean i mean i i had a podcast that i did i i killed it off about probably a little over a year ago at this point where i was like three and a half it was like 350 episodes over six years every single friday i would do one wow yeah that that was more like i don't know what i was doing i mean not that i don't know what i was doing i was on like this I have this personality, I guess. Um, where once, where <laughs> That's once, a good thing for a podcast. I think it's good. I think a yeah, it's good. like once once I go into something that I enjoy, I don't half ass it. And right. I think that after a while, like the momentum of that other podcast, I almost felt like, and I always said that. I'll stop when I'm not having fun anymore because it's not, it wasn't a job. I wasn't making money off of it. It was just something I genuinely right. like to do, but I think I was indirectly. Eventually I wound up putting like all sorts of pressure on myself because I had this track record of every single Friday, putting one out. Right. And That's so a lot, man, that's a lot. It, it was a lot. And like the first, I mean, I did like almost 200 episodes before COVID and I wasn't doing that was anything. before it was cool to zoom, man. You were way ahead of it, dude. I didn't even zoom. <laughs> I, it was always, it was always, I would be leaving work. I would be physically meeting up with people and doing an audio podcast. Like I would be leaving work and running to wherever. And then hopefully it would be in public spots. Sometimes it would be noisy. Sometimes not. Some people enjoy that part about it. But it was, it was, it was, and then after a while, I'm like, you know what? I just, I felt like I was having the same conversation with different people for some weird reason. It was very music based and stuff. And then I wound up having a whole bunch of other people, but I was like, you know what? Uh, I think I'm kind of done with this for no real reason in particular. I was like, I think I'm at a good point where I'm just going to kill it and move right. on. Right. You know, and I got wrapped up once again, you know, this and whole they pulled you back in. Yes, they pulled well, what what, oh, what happened was Danny Boy pulled me back in. Oh, that's now that sounds that sounds like Danny Boy, right? Recruiting yeah. recruiting. Yeah, you. But but completely indirectly, you know, this whole Delta Bravo thing. And I've been doing this whole film location and set crashing thing since like early 2016. I love that, by the way. I love the whole Delta Bravo. Group. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, it, it's so awesome, dude. And it gives you an a, a, a good reason to get out of the house. You know what I mean? It, it's anybody can do it. If you have a phone, you know, you have Google Maps, you have a phone, you have a car, you take the train, wherever you live, 
something is around wherever anybody lives in this country. I mean, I'm spoiled because I'm in Brooklyn. I'm I, I, yeah. I in New York City. I play around for 10 years and I still have, didn't even, you know, That's right. did it. Yeah. Uh, you you could just do Scorsese movies all your life. You'll be fine. All day long. <laughs> all day. Yeah. I actually, not too long ago, I don't remember off the top of my head, it was in one of the cemeteries, but he has he has a mausoleum at Scorsese and his mom, who is in Casino and Goodfellas, you know, you, have, hey. you see my painting, you know? Yeah. I mean, she's there. And, and Raging Bull, she was his mom in Raging Bull. Yes, yeah, she was. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so so when Scorsese, I mean, you know, it's going to happen one day when he leaves us. That's where he's going to be. And wow. I think it's, I think it's in Queens. Wow. Wow. I love. Well, I mean, you know, Delta Bravo is pretty much what led me here. Right. I mean, yeah, that's how I met up with Danny. You know, I mean, I don't think he buys every location that he visits. But uh, oh, no, you know, no. as far as the <laughs> outsiders goes, then he goes and, uh, you know, he saved saved the outsider's house and I, yeah. I owe him forever for that and we we all do all the fans and and uh and that's that's why I'm here you know he uh, from his podcast you know yeah. and sat down with he and Nako and yeah. uh and chopped it up and it was it was a lot of fun man I I love Danny yeah yeah me too I mean how could you not like that guy no it's he, very true. he's just he's just a humble sweetheart of a guy man you know plus he's much bigger than me so I'm I'm, I'm not gonna say anything bad about how him. tall are you I'm six three. Oh, he's not much big. He's two and a half inches taller than you. You're no, big. You're much bigger than me. I'm six even. I'm six foot even. <laughs> <laughs> so he's not much bigger. You're a tall guy. I but uh, he's a, he's it, a big yeah, dude. It, it's awesome that um. Listen for the. I mean, if 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 you're watching and listening to this and you don't know who Darren Dalton is and you don't know you know the whole Delta Bravo thing, you know Danny Boy bought the Outsiders House from the film based on the S.E. Hinton book. And I mean, I really shouldn't have to say this, but I feel like I have to, that Darren Dalton, amongst amongst several other things, he is the Soch with the conscience, you know, Randy Anderson from The Outsiders, which is a good Soch. The, yeah, you're the good Soch, the one with the conscience, you know, you, you know, you, you ain't a Soch, you just got it wants to talk. <laughs> you know, that's all you are, you know? Exactly. Yeah. And, um, but like I, I said it on on the, the 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 lost episode that we did, that you know, a lot of people have like this, you know, I I, I don't even know how to put it, but I I I put myself out there like I appreciate and and I give like credit when it's due, and then it, all of this stuff comes back to me from like when I was a little kid watching this movie and and all, and it's it's awesome because I have a thirteen year old daughter right now and she's reading it in school right now right, and she right. watched the movie when she was like four and five years old with me before the outsider's house came up and, and the Delta Bravo thing. So she grew up watching it and now she's reading it in school. And this coming summer, I'm going to bring her to Tulsa. So going back me, when they came out in 82, I was six going on seven years old. And for me to think that in almost 2023, I would be sitting here having a conversation with Randy and Soch. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of crazy. Like I put myself and I think about that and it's like, it's very odd how things work out and, and how things pan out when it comes to certain things. So it is. I, I I'm sorry, I that I, I did, I'm sorry I didn't bring I really my mean... blue Mustang for us to talk in, you know, oh, that, 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 that would be pretty crazy. It would have been better. You could have driven up. You could have, you know, talk, talk to my friends for a second, hopped in yeah. a heart to heart, a little heart to heart, <laughs> make fun of the talk you out of all the bad things you're doing. I don't know about all those, but that's probably a lot. Like, we could probably have a long talk. Yeah. But maybe one day if you're ever in Tulsa, maybe we'll actually bump into each other. If I happen to be there, that'd be great. You got I mean, have you seen the house? You've been to the house. And you, I've you been. Yes. It. Yeah. I went to the house it's amazing. It is yeah. incredible. Um, you know, it was just one of those moments. And a lot of people who hit locations like I do, we always had this, there's like a running theme of, you know, like I said, like I'm in New York and I, I could go to a hundred spots within a mile of where I'm sitting right now. And it's cool. And I enjoy all of it. But then there's certain ones that I find myself in where the hair on my neck will stand up. Yeah. And I would just be like, I'm I'm on the set of whatever movie. And that was one of those times when I pulled up onto North St. Louis Avenue for the first time. I'm just like, 
I'm on the set of the outside. It's like, why am I here right now? Like, how did I get here? And I'm, I, I stayed overnight in the house across the street in the grease. Oh, you did? Okay. You know, nice. I have, yeah, you got, I have, I can't half ass it, man. No <laughs> way. No way. And like one of those the moments. Grease or bed and breakfast, right? you damn right. Yeah, it's the grease <laughs> hideout, Airbnb. Exactly. Yeah, man. <laughs> and it's, it, it's so well done and there's so much thought and attention to detail with everything. And I mentioned it on several other podcast on several episodes, but I don't care. There was like that moment where it was it was late at night. It was probably about two o'clock in the morning, and I'm laying down in the back room. And the way it's set up, like the room that I'm in has the room with the television. There's a state gold neon sign, and I look to the <laughs> left, like down the hall. There's the other spare bedroom, and I see the outside of his house throw blanket on the edge of the bed. It's kind of dark. And it's really, and I'm, and I have to, I, I, I'm watching the outsiders and I'm sitting there and I'm like, the real house is right across the street, like 50 feet away from me, this, this, this. And then it's so quiet. And then what happens? I hear the damn freight train go by <laughs> and I, I consciously, I, I consciously put myself and like I told myself remember this and focus on exactly what's happening right now every little aspect of it and I'm like this is like just one of those moments where I can't reproduce that it wasn't yeah. planned it was just an amazing couple of minutes until I couldn't hear the train go by I'm like yeah. what a surreal moment that I never thought I would find myself in yeah it's nice there right I mean you can imagine and for me too when uh you know, I hadn't been back to Tulsa. Uh, I, don't know, I don't think I don't think I'd been back to that part of the state, um, you know, since I was 17 and made the movie. Really? And so then when Danny calls me up, he says, hey, I got the house, you know, come here, check it out. And then that's the feeling I got right away from the, like getting off the airport, the airplane and being, you know, driven from the airport because you go by the Admiral Twin on the way from the airport yeah. and stuff. And it's like, it just ran. I was right back there the, being a 17 year old kid with my mind blown that I was going to go, do what I was going to go do anyway. Yeah. And, and then to go there into the house. And when I got there, you know, because the house itself was dilapidated, right? They were going to tear it down. So yeah. they had to do a lot of work, had to t like take the stuff that had been modified out. So it was kind of bare bones and things like that. And then there on the wall, in one of the walls, I, I, I see an area where they've replaced the plywood. And, and I remember, and, and this moment of this night on set came back to me of being in my trailer and hearing these, uh, these circular saws going <laughs> and I go out there and here's, you know, Coppola's got his boys cutting off the side of the house. Yeah. And so they can do the, you know, the tracking shot where Pony Boy gets slapped and he goes out, he runs out and, 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 and I see that and it's just like, it was surreal. I yeah, mean, man. Like, when you're when you're 17 and and then that you know that was even more so once they got the house restored itself and they started to put the furniture back in and stuff like that because you know the not only because it was a movie but because the experience for me my first movie yeah. you know with these people these um, you know with my brothers you know all there my my film brothers mm -hmm. uh you know CT and and uh I've been back with CT. I've been back with Ralph. I've been, you know, it's, 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 it is such a surreal thing. And, and that to me, like what, you know, for daddy to create that experience, I, like I said, I'm, I'm grateful always. Yeah. That's yeah. Fantastic. I mean, and he, he has so much, he recently found, I got to give his name is Monty McManus. He lives not far yeah. from Tulsa. I know Monty. Yeah. And his wife. Yeah. He somehow or another found, and it's like certified, it, it's, 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 Basically, it, it's the, it is, it's the, it's one of like the, I don't even know how to explain it. It's just a round outer portion of one of the headlights that get crashed into, you know, the, the Curtis brothers. Pony, yeah, the, 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 the Pony's the parents. brother's car. The, yeah, yeah, and you, he like, he has that. Like, how do you have Diane Lane's skirt with the soda still spilled on it in a front, like, <laughs> I'm walking around there like this is so because I collect stuff too. And some people would see the stuff that I have and they'd be like, oh, that's a rock. I'm like, no, that's not a rock. That's this, this, and this. <laughs> I have a brick from the original stoop of the house. I have a brick nice. from the, the 52 pickup scene, the wall that's right behind Matt Dillon. I have 
all these weird a, a brick from the original Rocky store, the the Rocky pet store where he meets Adrian. Like I have these things, people are like, yeah, you collect rocks and gravel. I'm like, no, I don't. I'm like, maybe I do, but it's not really rocks and gravel. <laughs> you know, like this I is rocks and gravel to you. <laughs> right, exactly. But this is, you know, this is a it. piece of wood from one of the railroad ties from the track that was in Stand By Me when they almost get hit by the train. Like, that's, right. that's what happened. Yeah. I so, love it. I love it. And and but you Danny know, and, goes and, and, insane with that stuff, which is yeah, I love that. And that's the thing. It's it's not uh, you know, that movie is such a you know, such an experience for even the people that watch it that it's that it 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 does make those things more. You know what I mean? It's not just another movie. I mean, no. it wasn't just another experience to be there and do it. And 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 I didn't know that the first because it was the first movie, but then it, of course, you know, years down the line, as I did other movies, I went, okay, that was, that was special. There was something going on there, you know, and, uh, and it sets itself apart from, uh, you know, from other films. Um, and the great thing is, like you said, you have your daughter, you know, a lot of the time I'll go there or when I'm approached by people that know the movie, you know, want to talk about it two, three generations, you know yeah. what I mean? And there's not a lot of movies that do that, you know, no. like, like it's not that movie that, that you go, Oh yeah, my dad loves that movie. You know, oh well, that, yeah, exactly. that was exactly or whatever. It's like, oh no, <laughs> no, this is something everybody loves. So yeah, um, it's it's a classic story. It's it's yeah. it's yeah, it's like my daughter. She, it's like the other day. She's like, yeah, me like her and her friend Kylie. Yeah, we watched The Outsiders the other night. I'm like, oh, okay, how many times have you seen The Outsiders now? She's probably seen it about a hundred times in her life already. <laughs> like she would watch it like over and over and over and over again as a little kid, and I would watch it too. And I would be sitting down with her like, I remember when I was her age, and I'm watching this, and how it just like you just said, it just it just flips generations, and it's 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 a timeless movie. It is. It has that quality, which is. Yeah. One of the magical things about it, the way it was made and 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 the way that Coppola, you know, set it up. I mean, he he just kind of made it outside of time, which I, I love, you know, I love film already. I mean, it's it's everything to me. And and that's one of the you know, it's that it's that it's that uh, Tarkovsky quote, you know, that uh, film is a mosaic of time. It's like yeah. at its best. It is that kind of thing where it just kind of takes something and and makes it timeless and. Outsiders does it does it really well, you know, just the the way it looks and the way it feels and things like that. I'm 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 so proud to have been a part of it and just so so happy that it, you know, people loved it and and somebody like Danny and yourself and the the Del, you know, the the Monty and you know, yeah. I mean, you go back to the Tulsa, it's it's family, you know it's, what I mean? Yeah, it's, man. Yeah. A, what? I see those people every time I go back, I see the same people. They're all great. It's like it's 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 become so much more. It's yeah. It's and, and, he, and he and he just he kind of like the movie and the book, like the book, the movie is, has been there. And the book is I don't know how many languages around the world, but Danny would know that off the top of his head. He's probably yelling yeah. at me like, dude, you should know that. But um, <laughs> yeah, but it's like once he bought that house, it's like such a huge resurgence. Like I had two out of the three fifty two pickup kids. I had the Wagoner brothers on. Nice, you know. Yeah, and, that's nice. Yeah, and it's like super cool guys. And and Chris has Chris was diagnosed with cancer recently, so prayers for him. Um, yeah. but uh. You know, I, I was talking with them and and I was like, you know, have you, you know, even before the outside of the before the museum was created, like, did you like go past there? Like, was he was like, yeah, it was like people kind of knew, but not really because it was just, you know, just another house. You know what I mean? So what Danny did there and he just brought everything back up with this whole movie and then he's putting plaques up and he gets the key to the city and then he's doing <laughs> fish stuff and he's doing this like. This whole he's like he's like the mayor of Tulsa, man. He is. He could run. Yeah. I'd for him. You know what? It's insane. He probably can run, but you know what? I don't think he would because he's too busy now flying in planes and scuba diving. Yes. Yeah. You know, you know which which I run. I would rather do that than be in politics any day. You know. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Exactly. If I'm gonna take my life into my own hands. I want it to be on those on those terms. Exactly. Exactly. But, uh, <laughs> he's just a good guy and 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 i love you know because like you said the plaque they have the plaque now for rumblefish and so it's yeah. like it's you know it's kind of just it's just expanded it you know it's just something that he started this little pinpoint and and like i said we had a wonderful uh first conversation on his podcast and uh susie called in to that to, to that uh conversation and it was the first time i met him and it just kind of you know 
grew from there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was blown away when he, you know, sent me the Facebook message saying, uh, so I bought the house. Crazy. You know, I was like, you, you did? <laughs> really? Yeah. I know he had a heart attack once he bought it because he, he just bought it and then he walked inside and he was like, what the hell did I do? It was, it was a, it was a wreck when we filmed in it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> in 1982. You know what I mean? So yeah, dude. Uh, yeah, it was, but, but also the group that came together to re to do the rebuilding and things like that was, yeah. uh, was you know, people that I love, Donnie Rich. And, you know, I mean, it, it's just such a good, good group of people. Yeah, and, uh, um, you know, they got, they got a little spot in my heart. Yeah, of course. And a lot of people's hearts. Yeah. It's an amazing thing. You are you out, you're in, you're out in, no, you're not out in California. Yeah, you're in California. Aren't yeah, you? I'm in Los Angeles. I, I'm not in Los Angeles. I'm actually in the in the mountains, of, just kind of above Los Angeles. Okay. Uh, up on the Angeles Crest. So you know, I kind of, I go down there. You know, I, I teach now, so I go down there and teach uh, film and and things uh, four times a week. Nice. But I love getting you know getting up here and getting away from it. Yeah, I don't blame you. Next summer, oh. that's my next road trip. Is Cali? Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Best all I'm I'm so. Listen, I'll I'll take a text you my phone number, whatever. I'll I'll take you up on and go have a cup of coffee. Or I see you drinking tea. I'll sit down and have a cup of tea with you, bro. It's I'm it's just the it's just the just tonight. But oh. uh, um, <laughs> all right. I mean, I'm gonna go out there. I'm going out to Oklahoma. I guess I'm out there early February. I'm gonna be working okay. at an event. I'm seeing an event that pony boy himself is going to be playing music at yeah well, what's I, up with gonna... pony boy he's on like the country music charts now dude that guy <laughs> he doesn't mess around he you know what well, you know i and I, i've said this before but while the rest of us were making banana bread during the pandemic <laughs> this guy was learning to play the guitar and become a country western star yeah man it's kind of crazy <laughs> when, I, when he called me and said i'm learning to play the guitar i said he was crazy and look at him now so it's great and and you know, funny thing is, too, is my brother, my older brother, who's a phenomenal guitarist, plays in his band now. Really? Yep. So he's one of I the didn't know that. Express and, and they uh, so I'm looking forward to going out there and seeing everybody and, uh, you know, going visiting the house. And then they're going to play a big uh, benefit concert. He and Tanya Tucker huh. are going to play a big benefit concert at the River Spirit Casino there. Uh, it's a benefit for uh, uh, Muscogee Creek Nation veterans really that's yeah. awesome yeah it's gonna be fun it's gonna be a lot of fun so uh i look forward to getting back out there and stuff yeah. like that i don't know when the next time i'm gonna be at jersey is i don't know in I, jersey I, i'm in brooklyn I jersey enough i'm in brooklyn <laughs> i'm in new york you're in brooklyn sorry oh sorry there you yeah go. it's all right it's okay my daughter's in jersey it's fine i'm not mad at jersey <laughs> I, i'm not mad at jersey at all i have okay, not you, not, you don't have beef with jersey no no i don't know oh, new jersey no i have no problem i lived in jersey for a couple of years it's fine if I was ever to leave New York, I'd probably want to go to Jersey. There you go. That's funny. Yeah. If you want to yeah. leave New York, you go to Jersey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's just a couple, it's just a really bridge. spreading out. Yeah. Really, yeah. Well, you know, eh, you never know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm planning like, this whole thing. Uh, Danny Johnson, he's another Delta Bravo guy who who goes all over. He's like a traveling nurse. And he's all over the country. Like he, he'd be hitting like stuff in Chicago. Next thing you know, he's in wisconsin he's in california he's in oceanside right now but yeah. um but he mapped out like i i got super confused with the whole la area but i have like 50 something spots already on a list that he mapped out from california i'm starting up in san francisco starting with alcatraz and then working my way all the way down all the way down through la all that stuff and then i'm gonna pop over into arizona new mexico and then pop up to tulsa and then fly out of tulsa back home nice there yeah you go. Yeah, it's gonna be like a whole two week venture with my daughter, and I'm gonna bring her to the to the outside of yeah. and this stuff that she wants to go see and whatnot. Yeah, so I would, I, I mean, it's a shame. I would love to be able to, on a whim, be able to fly out to Oklahoma and go and hang out for this benefit. I would love to do something yeah. like that. Oh man, please, we're gonna have fun. So yeah, think about it. I, I, I don't know if I can. I don't. Know. It's the it's the <laughs> quote unquote heating season here in New York, and my job and my building, I won't be able to get out of there, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. So yeah, that that's awesome that he that your brother you have like this connection with with with, with Tommy Howell. I guess I don't even know if does it go. Did you meet him the first time on the Outsiders House set, or did you know him beforehand? No, I knew I, I met him on the Outsiders auditions. 
Okay. Um, you know, the auditions were such a crazy process in themselves. You know, we normally you get five minutes in an office with somebody, you read something, you know, maybe you read with somebody to see if there's chemistry and stuff. We we did, I think personally, I did about 50 hours of audition time of uh, two, two, two times I flew out to California. I was living in New Mexico at the time. I, I wasn't, I wasn't an actor. I, I mean, I was doing some work on stage and stuff like that. But really, I just drove a couple of my friends to uh, to an audition uh, ah. there in Albuquerque. They were doing a big nationwide talent search. So I I drove them to the audition. And then Janet Hershenson, who is the, the lovely casting director on that, said, you know, you should come in, too. And, uh, yeah. you know, the, the rest is history, as they the say. But, but uh, um, and so I met him on the on the auditions. We twice twice we went to uh, California, and then the the last the final audition we went to New York, and uh, um, he was the one thing about it. You know, we all swapped parts during the auditions. We we did a lot of improvising, and we you know we read it. You'd you'd have the script in your hand. You just read you know, and you and you'd kind of he Coppola was just saying you play this and you play that and you play this. Uh, but Tommy was always Pony Boy. Right. You know, I mean, there were other people there looking for Pony Boy that would read Pony Boy, but he CT was, he was, was Pony Boy, Boy from from jump. Yeah, man. When you looked at him too, you're just like, okay, all right. Yeah, we and, get it. Uh, He's Pony Boy. <laughs> oh my God, please! And he just had this attitude, which he still got, which is a wonderful attitude of just like you know, that's right. I'm here. I'm me. Uh, whatever you know. And, yeah. And it just it just played so well. And but but to be honest, uh, you know, between the fact that he was always working while we were on the set, you know, um, and the fact that he was, you know, he's a punk man, he's 13 or something like that. You know, I was like, I'm gonna, you know, we I, I ran into him a few times when we would both go after the same cereal on the, uh, you know, like uh, the craft service or something like that. Uh -huh. Otherwise, I was like, mm. but then we did Red Dawn couple years later yes and uh you know and, and again I, I i stroll into the la into lax to fly out to go do El, uh, red dawn i'd moved to la at that point and they're you know laying on a bench in lax is here's pony boy again yeah and he he so he was going to play robert and you know which again we had a connection in the movie itself and then plus we just had a great connection from that moment yeah. and had a great time on that set with especially with charlie charlie tommy and i were kind of like the the three musketeers on that guy and uh yeah, um, yeah there you yeah, go patrick there you go. i mean yeah patrick, that hair, you see that hair you see that hair oh back? i see that's, it that's crazy um <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah and then and then you know have worked with him many times just just really like, i think like somewhere around 15 movies or something like that that i that i saw on like imdb but we all know that that's not even accurate he will not leave me alone <laughs> yeah, not... it's like it's like I I look and I'm like cast. It's like C. Thomas Howell, uh, Darren Dalton, C. Thomas Howell, Darren. Dalton. I'm like, wow. I'm like these guys yeah. are like, you know, connected. It is. We're, you, honestly, I mean, you you hear that you throw around the term brother, but but uh, Tommy is a brother to me. You know, he yeah. he, he is someone that you know we've been there th through thick and thin. We we were roommates early on. We've been been with you know hanging out through a couple of you know. I was best man at his. Uh, wedding twice and uh you know, nice. <laughs> and uh he was best man at one of mine so that was good too uh, but you know it's uh it's it's he's just a he's 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 the best man i love tommy i i the, the honestly i just wish that you know we could be together more and hang out and work more but he's got his life man he's out doing the rock and roll thing and i got my yeah. life back here doing the uh doing yeah. the daddy thing so but he's good, good guy. Listen, there's nothing wrong with that, man. But you know what? You'll have a little re a little reunion in, in, in Oklahoma in February. Yeah. And it's the fact awesome. that my brother's playing the guitar in the band now just really makes me happy because he's a phenomenal guitarist. And and my brother is very much like a brother to me. So, you know, the two of yeah. them together, it just it it's kind of it's kind of fitting. It, may, it works yeah. out. I, that's awesome, man. Yeah. So I, I remember because, because of this whole Delta Bravo thing and. You had mentioned on on the on the lost episode because I wasn't sure because I didn't really research it for, for whatever reason because I knew it wasn't around here it would have to be a road trip that Red Dawn was mostly filmed in New Mexico Las Vegas Las Vegas New Mexico, New Mexico. Yeah, yeah I didn't think about that I was gonna say Santa Fe but I know that's a real place but no 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 I remember but, getting the call I know it's uh, weird. You know, 
Yeah, and when they said, oh, you're going to go do Red Dawn, and I'm like, okay, that's great. Where are we shooting it? You'll think it may be Colorado or something like that. Yeah. They're like, no, you're going to Las Vegas. I'm like, yeah. I am? That's it's great. Desert. Las Vegas, New Mexico. It's oh. a little different, but it's a great, another great place, you know, that we we swooped in. Great cast, you know, just a lot of young. I mean, look at the cast behind me. It's insane. Yeah. Yep. I mean, it it's it's insane. <laughs> what a cast, dude. Yeah, it was. It was a very fun movie as well. And, you know, another just kind of uh, iconic director, mm -hmm. John Milius. Uh Definitely yeah. a different, you know, definitely a different cat than uh, than Coppola was, but but different in a, you know, in a, in a in a cool way, a fun way. And who doesn't want to go, you know, play war? Yeah, you know, let's like go play war for... and blow up Russians and 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 crazy. I mean, secret hatch, booby trap hatches. <laughs> Oh, it's, yeah. It's oh. awesome. It's, it's and we such... were into it, you know. We were kids, so we were just yeah, we were eating man. it up, you know. <laughs> and and he, and on that one too, you know, the nice thing is both of those movies, Outsiders and, and Red Dawn, both had, you know, extended rehearsal times and training times and things like that. And so you got to really know each other. It wasn't just like kind of get in and you know, film and get out. And it was um, you know, just another another amazing experience. And and you know, and like I said, Tommy was there, so we we got we grew close during that. Charlie was there. Charlie was so much fun to hang out with, you know, Harry Dean Stanton, you know, yeah. uh, Powers Booth, you know. Some Powers Booth. Even... Yeah. It's like yeah. I watched it for the first time in a while, like not that long ago. And I'm like, that's Powers Booth. Like, I forgot that he was even in it. I'm like, that's crazy, man. Yeah, he popped up. Harry Dean, who I I love and who I, I, I was in contact with, you know, later on uh, as well. It was just such a, I, I, just such a great character, and and he had been in some of like Cool Hand Luke and some of the movies that I really just was blown away by when I was younger. So uh, you know, but he he was great because you know he came and did that movie. We were in Santa Fe, and and uh, um, we had a big send off for him when he finished. You know, when he did his whole "Avenge Me," you know, and yeah, stuff, and he got killed, and he was like, <laughs> "Okay, Harry Dean's gonna fly out tomorrow." So we got together, had a what we call Wolverines meeting and 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 like, you know, had a party. And uh, um, then we all drug ourselves off to set the next morning uh, and we came back, you know, beat up and dirty and bloody and all that stuff. And there was Harry Dean was still in the hotel. Nice. We were like, what's going on, Harry? What's going on? What's happening? And he said, man, I had so much fun uh, last night. I'm just going to stick around for a while. So he yeah. hung out for a couple of weeks. And uh, just uh, again, just th those those both those experiences were so good because of the of the immersion that the directors really, you know, took, you know, wrapped their arms around. They they loved the idea of creating a real experience. And I think it shows in the movies, too. You know, the sure. movies themselves are ones that kind of live, uh, live on and and uh, they're great, great experience. Yeah, man. Yeah, you worked with Leah Thompson a couple of times. Mm -hmm. You were, you know what? I was looking, I was digging a little bit, and I was like, I think that's awesome that you did. You did a movie called Montana. Yes. Now yeah. I looked. Yeah. At, I'm like, now I, I'm. I'm not gonna sit here and pretend like I've seen. I never seen it. I never seen it. So I'm not gonna pretend like I have. I'm not gonna sit here and bullshit you. But I definitely <laughs> will go and check it out. Because I saw it's like Dean Norris, who is Hank from Breaking Bad. Yep. Is in yes. it. I'm like, I'm like, that's and cool. Jenna Rollins. I mean uh, Richard Crenna, Jenna, you know, Jenna Rollins. Dude, you worked with Colonel Troutman. I <laughs> Richard I saw that. I just went, it's over, Johnny. Nothing is yeah. over. Like I saw that and I was like, that's Colonel Troutman. This guy worked with Richard Crenna. That to me, I nerded out right there. Like, that's yeah. awesome. Fantastic character. All the time. I mean, yeah, it was it, it was great. You know, he and Leah played father and and daughter, and he gave her hell all the time. And it was so it it worked so well for the uh, for the uh, the the relationship in the movie. But yeah, Leah and I at that time. Th then Leah and I in that one played husband and wife. We uh -huh. had a kid and all that stuff. I got to deliver a monologue, you know, with basically nothing on in a, in a cabin in uh, in <laughs> Montana. Nice. And uh, so, yeah, but uh, yeah. yeah. And he Michael was... Manson was in that too. Yes. yes Mr. Manson. Blonde, of course, from Reservoir Dogs, which is an iconic yep. character. And then, and then you wrote 
the lurking fear and wasn't the main character, the main lead role was also Michael Madsen. Yeah, he came in and did some stuff. Yeah, he's, you know, I mean, again, Michael's just such a great character, man. You you, you, you can't, he, the role he played in, uh, in, in, uh, uh, Montana was rather small, you know, right. and and but the the lurking fear was a bit a bit more. But uh, y- you know, uh, for me, the the person on Montana though was Jenna Rollins. Yeah. I was like, I mean, I, I was literally I was love struck by her. Really, you know, I, I I when I go the day the morning I go in to to meet her, I get there and it's it's on uh, Ted Turner's ranch in Montana, right? So it's this beautiful place, and they got her up on this buckskin horse. And they're light and she's lit and everything and and and, and oh, not like lit like the kids say these days, but no, I didn't think light. it was that she's way. <laughs> lit by light. She's pretty lit, she's pretty lit on that level too. But no, I but, know uh, lit for yeah, filming. Lit, yeah, for her close-up. And, right. Uh, <laughs> wow, man. I heard I heard uh I heard music, you know what oh. I mean? I was like, I fell in love. And and you know, I think in my youthful exuberance. One night we were in a rain during a rainstorm. We were in rain cover, and she and I were sitting in a pickup together. I think I might have proposed to her. Nice. No, you didn't feel think really you did. Down, you but... proposed to her. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. You she, did. That's you know, awesome. <laughs> very politely said uh, she, there was only one man for her, and I, I get that too. So I mean, it, it, <laughs> that that was such a great experience. You know, it was just it. Uh, it it, being reunited with with Leah was was a blast, and um uh and that cast was so great. And being able to cowboy, you know, I grew up in Wyoming, so I grew up you know riding horses, doing those things, and to be able to kind of put that into practice was a lot of fun. Nice man, and a, a lot of a lot of things. Well, something that a lot of people might not know was that you were killed by Freddy Krueger. I was killed by Freddy Krueger on the. On the Freddy's uh, nightmares, yeah, the Halloween, the Halloween special of Freddy's nightmares to make it with, even with Mariska more. Hargitay, yeah, Marie from uh, from uh, SVU, is that what it's called? Or see, yeah, something like yeah, that. Yeah, something, something like that. that. Yeah, and we, uh, yeah, that's 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 true. I mean, I've been killed by a lot of people. You know, t- you talk about Tommy. Tommy's killed me more times than anybody. Right. <laughs> We find we finally did a movie because we you know we did we worked for the company Global Asylum for made some movies. It was a really fun period of of like our our growth in that Global Asylum. If you don't know, is they they later became uh, famous for Sharknado. Okay, right? so they were making movies. They made about fifteen movies a year and yeah. various budgets, and and we were going in and just pitching stuff for them, and we were able to do that. And so I was writing them. So I said. Ah, this is it, man. This is it. I'm gonna yeah. kill. I'm gonna kill him in this movie. I wrote it. I what wrote movie it. did you kill him in? The Land of Time. No, 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 no. Don't jump ahead. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm, I'm gonna he shut up. You have to That's the problem. He was directing, right? So he says to me, <laughs> you know, so we get around the time where I'm gonna be the guy to kill him, and he's like, you know, I don't know if you'd kill me here. I think he might have ended up killing me. You know, I mean, <laughs> nice. Uh, uh, <laughs> Can't win. Can't win. That's hilarious, dude. Yeah. Oh shit. Now, how is how is your? I mean, you are obviously you're an actor and you're a teacher and you're a writer and you're a producer, but you wrote a novel, dude. I did. I did. And it's, you know, it's, it's a longer road, you know, like I, I thought I'd write, I'll write something and then I'll just kind of self publish it and put it out there myself. And it's taken a little bit longer road than that, you know, just trying to go down a more, uh, you know, a more published type route. Yeah. And so I'm on to the second one now. And really? t- this is how it happened. You know, I love writing for film. I love, I love writing for television. And so every year, you know, for my representation, I would write a, 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 a pilot, and uh, one one year, I guess, was maybe five, six years ago, I wrote a pilot called Epoch. And uh, I knew it so well. I knew what the idea was going to be so much that I just sat down and in six weeks wrote the first season as a novel. And um, and kind of got this kind of said to myself, why have I not been doing this all along? It was really fun. You know, it was yeah. really it was really a fun thing. You're not at the, you're not at the whims of, uh, you know, of the Hollywood system and, you know, let's get things produced and the time involved in that. Uh, you get to kind of tell your story. So I'm looking forward to, I, I, I'd hoped it would be out um, this year, 
but it looks like it's going to be more like next summer. Okay. Uh, just because we're just doing editing and rewrites and things like that. But it's a, you know, it's a fun novel. I, 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 uh, I look forward to the one I'm working on. The second one I'm really excited about too. So I'm just, uh, it's kind of, you know, I, I, I need more time, bro. I need, okay. you know, All right. I need you to come babysit my kids or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just come watch the kid for a minute. I got some work to do. Yeah. yeah. I got, yeah. Well, listen, yeah. that's, uh, well, well, I mean, you, you, you were writing it. Well, actually, I mean, you wrote it as a, you wrote a pilot and then, so it came naturally to you. So, I mean, it sounds hacky or whatever, but I guess like being patient and just doing all the little small, you know, crossing the, you know, crossing the T's and dotting the I's and all that. I mean, when it comes out, it'll come out and then you have something else in the works too. So. Yeah. I mean, and you know, there's a, there's a part of me that just goes, just get it out there. Right. But then it's then at the same time, it's like, well, I don't know anything that's out there that's representative. It's nice to have it, you know, be as good as it possibly can be. Absolutely. So, you know, that's that's kind of where we're at. And I still I still love writing, uh, you know, film and TV. But but this was this was something new. And, and you know, listen, the way that I, you know, grew uh, kind of became you got my love of storytelling was obviously from novels as well. Like Stephen King and, you know. Sure uh thomas wolf and people like that that's who really inspired me and got me going and uh um so to be able to do it like it, it felt very natural so i'm i'm excited for people to read it and uh and it will be a longer series of books too that's another thing too is it's not a one-off you know so we want to okay so so epoch is basically like a part one and then it's just going to continue yeah. on oh, okay think, you know I'm, it's, it'll be a three-part situation hmm. and uh um but you know we're getting the first part done, and the and the and then like I said, the new thing I'm excited about. I'm always excited about the thing I'm working on. That's the way yeah, it works. Right? Of course, man. Well, you have the you have you know you you create things, and and I I understand that. Like whether it's something like as silly as a podcast, or I get really into, especially the I, I made all the flyers for this podcast. I wanted it to be a, a, just uniform and more simple and streamlined. But like I would get into like my old podcast, it would take me sometimes. I would get so into it at like eight, nine, 10, 12 hours to make a flyer because they were all <laughs> completely different. And yeah. I would be so anal retentive about it that somebody would be like, oh, that looks great. I'd be like, yeah, but you see this? They'd be like, I don't even know what you're talking about. I'm like, <laughs> oh, it's got to be. So I, I, I've worked on eight hours for a, for a flyer. I sat back, I looked at it, I'm like, I don't like it. And just dumped it and all, over. all over. So yeah. I, I understand where it has to be a certain way and I might be a little bit insane when it comes to that. You know what I mean? But then again, I think it's, it's, you know, the, you know, the term it's, you know, a lot of times that we're our own biggest critic, you know what I yes. mean? Yes. So, so. And I, and I think, that. I think with writing, the thing for me too is, you know, especially when you have something like a novel, that's long form, you, you, you go, well, what if, and then you make a little tweak here and then the ripples go out and you're like, okay, so I'm, re I'm rewriting this now because, right. you know, suddenly he's a she and the things are happening and the, uh -huh. you know, they, this person doesn't die. And, you know, yeah. and so, you, and that's kind of what's happened. And, and, uh, um, I, like I said, I really like the, the outside of the Hollywood framework of being able to fine tune a story to my own standards, as opposed to, okay, network notes and, you know, director's notes and producer's notes and it's like no you guys take a seat yeah <laughs> i'll do it myself although yeah. like i said like you said the, there is the critic within me that's you know always given notes as well so sure yeah but the but the, if you're over critical yourself and then you start you know, maybe over editing or then doing something and then i get it so it's like for, i obviously not speak a few but like for me there's got to be a point where all right, let me just stop, and now I got to put my hands up, or else, yeah. or else I'll be there forever trying to. There will always be something that I'll overlook and overthink and change, and next thing you know, it's like ten years down the line, and I'm still not done. Yeah, no, and that's true too. And you know, in teaching, because I, you know, teach teaching young screenwriters how to do it, the one thing that I always push them to do, and I would push anybody to do, is just like fail, go do it go, go, go write it and get it out there. And if it's not, you know, don't worry about how good it is and stuff like that. Cause really it's kind of a staircase that leads you to other things and, uh, you know, different places and everything's kind of a stepping stone, you know, even the outside or something that seems a great destination was really just a stepping stone towards something else. Sure. So I, I, you know, I, I definitely kind of 
embrace that idea. So there will be a time when I'll be, when myself and the other people involved will definitely go, okay, let's put a cover on this thing. Get it yeah. out. Yeah. Do you have any working titles for the second one or no? Well, you don't want to, do, you don't want to. Uh... The, the second one that I'm doing, which is not the second in the series of Epoch. Oh, okay. Second, okay. It's, it's called, the one that I'm working on now is called This Quiet Dust. And okay. uh, it's different too. It's different. They're all, I, I'm a wonder junkie. You know, I love like things that have a sense of wonder. I love, you know, to, I'll lean slightly towards the sci-fi, but more grounded, grounded sci-fi, slightly towards the horror, stuff yeah. like that. So, you know, it's, it kind of fits I'm, in I'm, that. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a horror guy. Yeah. I am. I love I'm, it. Just, yeah. Yeah. I grew up on all of that stuff, dude. All yeah. of that stuff. All the even even like terrible terrible movies like I I like a terrible movie because it's terrible you know what yeah. I mean yes like like Basket Case and those movies <laughs> from like nineteen like terrible movies that look like they cost like you know a thousand dollars to make from like nineteen eighty one and horrible CGI and stop motion stuff I love all that stuff dude yeah so, me too me too yeah. brother yeah do you ever do like conventions or anything like that. I do some, I do, I do a few, you know, um, I've done, I'll go out to Tulsa and do it cause it's such a, you know, it's such a rich spot, but again, you know, I'll go to Palm Springs every once in a while. Um, uh, I'll do, I'll do some of the cons. It's pretty yeah. fun. The, the fun thing is, is if I'm there with, uh, you know, with Tommy, like, yeah. like Tommy Ralph and I have gone and done a little bit of that. And that's, that's, cool. that's a blast. Um, it's, it, I, first off, I love meeting the people. Yeah. That's phenomenal. But yeah. it's, you know, it 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 might it seems on the outside you look at it and you're like, oh, well, that's not much there. You just kind of like, oh, sign of sign of autograph here. Yeah. I forget what my name even is. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you're just out there and it's it it is a it is a lot of work. It's not something that I've, you know, I'll do a kind of the niche, more niche type ones and sure. uh, and really enjoy it. Uh, because like, you know, for, for like in Tulsa, you just get people that they just really truly love. The yeah, movie, yeah. you know, Absolutely. they're not there just collecting something or doing something like that. They're, that's like they they really love what's happening, and and I love talking to those people. So I do I do them sometimes. Yeah, yeah, I love going to them. I haven't been to I haven't been to one in a while, but there's a whole bunch that happen around here. Like there's the New Jersey Horror Con, there's Monster Mania, but then the yeah. one that's not just real. I mean, th those. I mean, it sounds like just horror stuff, but they have people that aren't horror in horror movies also. But like there's the Chiller Convention. Chiller is just like anything goes, you know, I mean, you know, Ra Ralph was, was at one of them. And for some, this was before Cobra Kai and all that stuff. Right. He was there. I didn't meet him though. And I don't know. And, and now I kind of kicked myself in the ass. Like, I'm not even sure why I didn't meet him. Yeah. You got to meet him. He's the, I know. He's I don't even know why. Like I kicked myself. He's a great guy. He's a great, yeah. I'm, I'm, very, I'm extremely happy about Cobra Kai and how well it's been, you know, I love it because and, it brings you right. It brings me right back to watching it when I was a little kid. And all the old people, you know, all the original cast and how yeah. they're following the movie with the cast, you know, with the, with the people coming into each season. I think yeah. it's awesome, bro. It's it's an amazing step back in nostalgia. And like my daughter watches it, and but she like never saw like the Karate Kid Part Two. So I'm like, hold on, like we got to go back. You need to watch these movies and then watch it, and you'll be able to appreciate like what they actually did so many years later yeah well last time i saw ralph he was it was before it was i think it was right around the time that netflix had kind of picked up the series and stuff and he was talking about it and uh and so i'm just really happy that it's gone so well because yeah. he's good he's a good man yeah man listen I, I i don't wish bad on anybody i hope everybody gets everything that they deserve and everything that they want and, and all of that you know what i mean yep so yeah what else you have going on? I mean, you're taking a little bit of a break in the new year, by the way. This is, we are recording, what is it? What's today's date? The the day before the, the eve of New yeah, Year's Eve. Yeah, this is New Year's Eve Eve. That's right. Which seems kind of right for like mission statements. I mean, I don't know if, I don't know if yeah. it, it goes in that direction, but I'm a big believer in kind of like intention and mission statements and stuff like that. And, yeah. and here we are. I mean, it's, it's, it's resolution time. So there I mean, you go. And then, you know what I was thinking about before, before, you know, I, before I sent you the link and stuff, I was like, you know what, maybe it was kind of not so bad that, that there's a lost episode because you're going to be the first one to kick off 2023. I, I appreciate that. I appreciate You know what I mean? You're next in line. I mean, this is going to go to my guy 
and he's going to boom, boom, boom. And I'm going to put it up as soon as he sends it back to me, which, which will probably, I'll probably put it up Tuesday. Nice. Most I likely. love it. I yeah, love it. man. So what are you, are you taking a break? Cause I know you had a hectic end of your school year and whatnot. Yeah. And- you know what? We'll, we'll go back into it. The, the school that I teach at, it's a school called LOXA. It's the LA County High School of the Arts. It's the number one art school in the country. And it's uh, I work in the cinematic arts department. And these these kids have access to, to uh, equipment that just would blow your mind. I mean, huh. it's better than most colleges. And we have about five major film festivals every year. And so we're working towards uh, the big end of the film, uh, end of the year film festival is called Sundown. And that's that's kind of like a, a, a big thing that we really work, you know, refine the movies for. And there's a music video festival and there's a there's a horror festival. It's called Cinema Scare Night. And there's a, a there's a 64 hour film festival. There's all these really great film festivals. So we'll kind of take a breather and then jump back in because the second half of the year gets pretty intense with uh you know the filming and and uh like i've done notes on so many scripts right now i don't even know what's going on you know what i mean yeah uh, um and it's but it's a great bunch of people great bunch of kids great great uh group of teachers that, that i work with faculty and uh you know they learn everything they learn producing they learn uh screenwriting and directing and all these different things and uh so i'm gonna i'll be jumping back into that um jumping back into uh to kind of writing and getting some of those things done i have you know have the 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 prose piece but then i also have a couple of uh of uh films that I, that i've written one film that actually tommy maybe may direct uh I, I is going to direct that uh th- that looks kind of promising for this year based on a true story um and so i'm looking forward to that and you know just Definitely taking a breath for a moment before, okay. you know. Well, yeah, you can't have too much on your plate, man. You, gotta... I, you know, I'm I'm so lucky. I'm up here in this be- beautiful little mountains, like ski resort town. I got got a beautiful wife, and and I got an eight year old son. Awesome. And, uh, nope, is he? He's nine now. He just he's okay. nine. I and, get confused uh, too. I said yeah. I want to see my daughter's twelve. Uh, it's just exactly, so exactly. And uh, um, so having a little bit of time, especially this time of year, to spend with them is really, <clears throat> really been great. We've just been doing some walks and getting, you know, kind of, kind of settling down the last couple of days. So uh, you know, just taking a breather before it awesome. before it gets crazy. Yeah, man, you got to do that. Enjoy the process. Can't sit down with you, problem. please. Huh? I got to sit down with you. I'll sit down with you and make things right. Yeah, yeah, we got to make things right. <laughs> We, we got to settle everything down. You know? That's right. That's right. It felt like a dangly, like a dangly end, man. I need to get yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, I felt like I was breaking your chops, man. But then again, I was like, you know, life happens and I get it. Dude, that's, I mean, that's, that's life happens is the, that's the bumper sticker for 2022. Yeah, that's for sure. But, uh, um, exactly. but no, it's, it's, it's really good. I couldn't, couldn't be in a better place. I love, I love, I love the small. It's funny. Cause I grew the town that I came from in wyoming same elevation and same population as the town i'm in now awesome and it's like it just kind of weird kind full of, circle kind of fits yeah exactly yeah. very cool do you mind if i throw out my sponsors real quick no please i'm gonna push like a button on my neck and i and i look weird because i gotta close Wait, isn't my... it you got a co- you got a coffee sponsor i do i love well, i'm i i i promote everything coffee related all right. Well, I, well, I'll I'll tag the coffee thing as soon as I'm done with something that some people know about, but I'll drop it here anyway. There you go. Um, so, Dead Sled Coffee. Uh, follow them on Instagram at Dead Sled Coffee. D E A D S L E D Coffee. Um, if you go to DeadSledCoffee.com and you type in the promo code Delta Bravo, you will get twenty percent off of your order. Um, what's cool about them, and this is this is a, a sponsor that I had on my last podcast, and even before they were a sponsor, I was drinking their coffee. So it's not like I'm, I'm bullshitting here. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but if you use the promo code Sosha's Rule, it's thirty percent off. Oh, uh, see, I'm gonna have to. Hey, Mike, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta hit up my guy Mike <laughs> and say, uh, <laughs> listen, maybe that could be like a little thing, but um, you never know. But um, see, what's what's awesome about them, they're a small company, which they're getting bigger, it's completely small, independent, but they, for such a small company, they do like amazing things. They have like officially licensed, like 
dude, they they wound up getting like rights to like Warner Brothers movies and stuff. So they they have like a Pennywise blend and a Robert Englund Nightmare on Elm Street blend. Friday the Thirteenth, Kane Hodder, Elvira, Rob Zombie, um, all these bands. Disturbed. They have a Kiss. They actually. I mean, Gene Simmons will 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 sell anything, I'm sure. But he did like a kiss blend with like four different bags of each member of the band. Like they do so much really cool stuff. And I was talking with them and and hopefully it'll get running soon. It will happen, but like I guess everything else, things take time with packaging and this and that. But there will be a Dead Side Coffee Outsiders House Museum blend. Nice. And yeah, it'll be like probably like a stay gold blend or something like that. Nice. But for, yeah, to sell, you know, you, you could sell, but you could, you'll wind up being able to buy it on the website. And I'm sure he'll get, he'll send a whole bunch of it over to the museum for the gift shop and all that. So, you know, it's just something that I thought was cool since they were a sponsor. He's a friend of mine. I, I ran it by Danny and I'm like, like, why not? You know what I mean? So whatever. Yeah. And I don't care. Me personally, I have no stake in the game. I just happen to know them. And I think it would be cool. So whatever you guys do, have at it. Enjoy. But uh, yeah, Dead Sled Coffee. They're a bunch of good guys and they have awesome coffee. And and if you're not even a coffee person, they have tea. They have cold brew. They have all kinds of stuff. So Dead Sled Coffee. I love it. Also, uh, Main Street Jukebox. Uh, Tom Lefevre, who is a Delta Bravo guy. He owns a an old school record store that's been around since 1994. It's in Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania. They're still going, and since 94, man, selling records and all that kind of stuff. Um, they're on Main Street in Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania, and follow them on Instagram as well at Main Street Jukebox. It's M-A-I-N-S-T Jukebox. Um, last but definitely not least, Kevin Bednars, who is another Delta Bravo guy, he lives in Virginia, and he actually, that's the first time where I met Tommy Howell. A few years back, Kevin put on this thing in Tyson's Corner, Virginia. It was called the All-Star Comic Con, and he had Danny Boy there, and he had Tommy there. So nice. I never met Tommy at that point. I was like, you know what? Let's just get out of here for the weekend and go and say what's up to Danny and support whatever this whole thing is. So that's where I met Kevin, but he owns three pubs in Virginia. There's the Percival Percival Pub, the Ashburn Pub, and Percival Eats. All three of them are sponsors of the Delta Bravo podcast. And follow them on Instagram. It's at Percival Eats. It's P-U-R-C-E-L-V-I-L-L-E, I think. <laughs> Percival Eats, Percival Pub, and Ashburn Pub. Just, just type it in, and it's like voodoo. It comes up on your screen, yeah. and you'll find it. It's 2023. Come on, you know? <laughs> but, uh... But yeah, those are my sponsors. And uh, yeah, like I said, they're all small, small businesses and and I support them and I buy stuff from them and all that. So I love it. Yeah, man. Support local. I love it, brother. Yeah, man. Thanks so, for having me, man. Thanks for having thank me. You, uh, thank you for, for, for lending me your ear again for the second time. And uh, yeah, see this conversation. Three's, was a, charm. Like, three's, three's a charm, bro. If we yeah, don't, listen, hey, know. listen, listen, <laughs> uh, listen, uh, in all honesty, if you ever wanted bullshit, I know you're not going to ever be bored because you have so much going on. But if you ever want to bullshit, you have something going on. A book is about to come out. You're making a movie with Tommy, you're making a movie with anybody. You want to talk about it? Yeah. Just hit me up and we'll make it happen, dude. You have an open door. We'll do that. I'll get I'll get in the same room with uh, CT one of these days and we'll uh, we'll hit you up. That would be awesome. I would love to get the both these together in the room and 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 chop it up with you. That would be very 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 cool. I love it. Dude, Darren, thank you so much. Stay gold, my man. Stay gold. Thank <laughs> you, sir. Thank you. Be safe. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye-bye. Later, brother. Thank you.